All right, welcome everyone to the um, vignettes quilt quilt along. Um, I'm Heidi Parks. I'm so delighted to have everyone participating in the quilt along. And I'm going to encourage you, uh, I'm going to remove the spotlight on me and encourage you to shift over to gallery mode just so we can see everyone. There are a lot of great faces and I see um, at least two uh, quilts in progress in the background, which is very mm -hmm. exciting. Uh, let's use the chat a little bit, especially if you're less familiar with Zoom. Along the bottom, you've got mute, you've got your video camera, security, participants, and then the chat. So if you click on that chat along the right side, you will be able to see people. And Kira has said hello. Um, maybe we could just share where we are. So I'm in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And if you're able to type in your location, that would be really special to see. Detroit, Michigan, Glendale, Arizona, Berlin, Germany, Montclair, New Jersey, Ann Arbor, Michigan, Geneva, Illinois, um, Ontario, Canada, Calgary, Canada, Summit, Wisconsin, Minneapolis. Ooh. Oh, that's amazing. You're in Milwaukee, Oregon. I didn't even know there was another one. Thank you, Lulu. Um, Evanston, Nottingham in the UK, Chicago. I was born in Chicago. More England, California, Buenos Aires, Mexico, UK, Canada. Oh, I love how international our group is. Um, so let's just do, let's see if we can do it with a real show of hands instead of the raise hand function. Like maybe you can really block out your face. Um, has anyone who's already made the quilt pattern, like pieced it? You don't have to have quilted it, but have you already pieced a version of this quilt? Okay, beautiful too. And then has anyone gotten a head start on piecing their blocks? <clears throat> okay, wonderful. So there's quite a few people who've gotten a little bit of a head start. That is probably going to be helpful, depending on how busy life gets. Um, it's definitely important to remember that the prompts are uh, connected to each step in the pattern, but that doesn't mean you have to show your finished version of that prompt. You could easily make a sketch on a piece of paper or do a little video where you talk about some of the ideas that you're contemplating. Uh, there, you know, this is this is a pattern that explicitly says in the directions that when you're doing the elements, if one or two of them are tricky, save them for later. Don't do it right now. Don't rush. So, uh, I think it would be the most fun and the most true to the pattern to embody that as we are doing our quilt along. So, if there's one prompt that you haven't gotten to yet that is confusing uh, make a video or share about that or post a photo of the fabric that you're considering uh, but kind of owning that improvisational nature of the pattern and the way that you can sort of poke at it and if you want to skip something or add it later you you can absolutely do that and I think that that would be really fun to share in the prompts rather than uh, you know, trying to be too perfect in the prompts and have every single block done exactly as it should be exactly on time. Um, if you're able to do that, and especially if you are, if you've already made the quilt and you just want to celebrate the quilt that you made, you can post a photo. If you go back in your archives, you might have some progress photos, but you can also post a close up of the quilt that you finished. And, and celebrate that you started it when the pattern launched in February. So there are a lot of different options in that regard. Um, I have a PowerPoint to share and it's got a little bit of an itinerary for us. And then the second half I'm thinking will be on about an hour, but we'll see how things shake out. 
Uh, I wasn't sure how many people we'd have. I've sold over 200 patterns, which is amazing. We had over 65 people register for the Zooms, but just because you register doesn't mean you'll be here. So right now we've got um, in the mid thirties uh, are, are here. And so that that's actually a really gentle amount of people to have on board. Like we can all say something at some point. So as I'm going through the PowerPoint, you're welcome to unmute yourself and ask a question, if, especially if something makes you curious or if you just want to like, comment rather than ask a specific question. Uh, so here we go. I'm going to share my screen. And I'll share this PowerPoint from the beginning. Okay, so um, today is the harvest full moon, and especially since my last quilt along and last pattern was the moon improv quilt, it felt ideal to start with the moon. Uh, I'm going to share an introduction to all of our daily prompts, and those can be found on my blog on HeidiParks.com, and they'll be linked in a variety of places as well. I will also be sharing about an exciting live conversation that we're gonna do next weekend. I have made a five minute preview of the two and a half hour video workshop for the quilt along. So, or not for the quilt along, for the pattern. So um, especially if anyone has already watched that video, that would be so lovely to, after we watch the preview, if you wanted to share a little bit about your experience. I know Sam's watched it, <laughs> I see you nodding. So um, we may have a couple people who've already made the quilt pattern. I see that we do. So I would also like to highlight you guys and have you share some insights having made a quilt with the pattern. And then we'll have some general time for Q and A. And we also want to consider finding an accountability buddy for the quilt along. And we want to think about the fabric swap, if that's exciting for you. So uh, we may not go into the most, I I've put the PowerPoint slides for all 31 days of the quilt along. We don't need to go in depth about every single one, but I do want to give you a general idea of what's going on here. Um, let's see. Sometimes the way that Zoom shows stuff isn't how I want. Well, okay. <laughs> so for today, you just want to share about that you're doing the pattern and perhaps talk about the fabrics that you have collected. And then tomorrow is about the elements of art. So you don't have to have anything sewn. It's another one to kind of ease you in. If you've just reviewed the page about the elements, that's great. Uh, there are a lot of nice prompts for how to engage in the quilt along. So for example, today you'll want to do a post and always use #vignettesquilt and tag me the pattern writer. And then after that, you ideally would like and comment on at least three other posts in the hashtag. So say welcome if you don't have an accountability buddy yet, you could say, hey, I'm looking for an accountability buddy. You look like you're on top of things or something about your color palette really inspires me. Would you want to connect in that way? Um, and then, you know, if you already have an accountability buddy, you could comment and say, I've already got someone. Otherwise you can say, yes, thank you. That would be amazing. Uh, so, um, you might also want to encourage someone in the comments or in your post to also participate with you. So uh, that could be a fun option too. Then day two, the, interact the interactivity part is in your stories. So I would like to encourage you to do a story and share someone else's post 
from the quilt along. So their post about the elements or their post from yesterday, from today. <laughs> uh, it's, it's a really great way to share the word and to celebrate and to start to see what everyone is doing. The day three is about line. So that's our first prompt for the elements. And you can post anything you want about your line vignette. It can be pieced, it can be embroidered, it can be appliqued, it can be in progress. Like maybe you're stitching it, maybe you make a video of yourself stitching it or make a reel of yourself stitching it, or it could be a drawing of you playing around and trying to decide what to do. Maybe you just want to use a straight cut of fabric and not sew anything. And so you could cut a little piece of a fabric that has a lot of line in it and say, done, <laughs> that's it. I'm complete for this block. Uh, and then for your comments, I'd like for you to share about, um, uh, you know, just to share something in the comments of other people with complex feedbacks, like a whole sentence. If you think it's pretty or beautiful, why do you think that? Or why is it innovative or unique or thought provoking? So here I've done some sample comments. Someone might say, your line vignette is so bold. It reminds me of an Egon Schiele painting. He's one of my favorite artists. Or wow, I never thought by using line in that thought about using line in that way. How did you decide to piece your line instead of embroidering it? So any kind of thoughtful back and forth uh, conversational comment. Day four is about the shape prompt and then comment around how, um, how are some principles of art being used? So you'll have to flip ahead in your pattern to see the principles of art, but you might point out that something makes a nice focal point or has a good sense of rhythm or um, that, that it has a nice sense of balance or if it is symmetrical or asymmetrical or a radial design, you could say, oh, my goodness, even though you were focused on shape, you've made a radial balance. So something to go a little deeper and get used to the principles of art as well. Then we'll go through form, value, the other elements. Um, and on that day, I'm going to have on the 25th, a conversation live on Instagram with my friend, Amanda Nadig art. She is also participating in the quilt along. So this is what we're going to talk about. So this is me and Amanda with our quilts. It'll be noon next Saturday. And she's been curious for a while about how I title my quilts. And I would love to share that. And I thought it worked perfectly for this quilt along because a title is just one of many ways that we connect words with art. And sometimes things that you can say with art are hard to put into words, but it's important to have thoughtful comments for other people and to write an artist statement. So we are going to be doing a special Zoom con or sorry, Instagram live conversation <laughs> where she makes such cute videos where we talk about um, putting words to our art because sometimes that can be really tricky. So space and then of course the prompt is to post, um, leave comments for someone else and make a note of another element of art that is also strong within the composition. So the block is about space, but are they using color in an interesting way? Is there a cool texture? Is there a lot of line? We're kind of always using all of them all the time. One of the things that can be tricky about the pattern is that it's so open-ended. You could take one block and assign it maybe to any of the prompts and it could work. So acknowledging and starting to appreciate that interchangeability and the way that you really can't only use texture. If you're just, if you think you're just using texture, you're probably also using shape or line or color. 
um, or space and the way that they work together is part of what's so beautiful about them. So this is a prompt to use another element of art. Texture. Color is our last element of art. Um, this one, I love hashtag dress like a crayon. I like feel so entertained when I look at people who are wearing monochromatic outfits. So, uh, you know, that's a sample comment. There are a lot of fancy words in the color world. So the challenge is to incorporate a fancy color word that works with the vignette block that you have made. And then on day 10, we're going to transition to the principles of art. So we'll have another Zoom. So I'm not gonna go as in depth about the prompts for day 10 and beyond because we will have met again on Zoom by then to get into them. But there are some really fun options that I continue to get into um, for appropriation. You're encouraged to share a story rather than uh, to comment. I mean, hopefully you'll also comment on other people's posts, but the social prompt is to do a story. Uh, we're doing a fabric swap and you should have arrived your fabric by day. Your fabric should be arriving at its destination by October 10th. So these are some details for our fabric swap. Um, the rules for giving fabric and receiving fabric. And that Google slide presentation is available for you pretty easily on my blog, the same place where you got the Zoom link. And this is what each form looks like when you do the fabric swap. So you'll, you have a piece of fabric or maybe a, a, a you know, a lonely quilt block that never became anything or a little bit of stitching and you're willing to part with it. So you'll put your image here and you'll put your personal information. So your name, your country, your contact info. Um, you noticed we have people from Canada, from South America, from the UK, from Europe. So make sure you put that and then notice uh, so that you can choose someone who shipping won't be as complicated. Or if you do choose someone who is outside of your country, you really want their fabric, maybe you could figure out a way to help reimburse them for any extra shipping costs that are beyond, like in America, it shouldn't cost more than $5 to mail a little bit of fabric to somebody. So if it's gonna cost a lot more than that, just be thoughtful and also be aware of customs, you don't want things to get lost in customs and be super slow arriving. Um, and so once you see on that PowerPoint, a block of fabric that you like, that you want to have put, like you get to request it right away. The caveat is it's a swap, it's not a free for all. So in order to request something, you have to have first posted the fabric that you're willing to give to someone. So once you've done that, then you can go in and put your name to request something as soon as it is um, made live on there. And then you'll share your Instagram handle so you guys can communicate about things. And then please confirm on the PowerPoint when, or on the Google slideshow, when your fabric has arrived. So that will be an aspect um, going along as well. Uh, here we're back to our postmodern principles, day 12. Your fabric should be in the mail or maybe not even in the mail yet. We want it to arrive by 1010 is the due date for the fabric swap. Um, so here, more thoughtful comments and I've got some nice examples of comments. Um, there's quilter. Alexis Dees is a friend of mine and a quilter in the Modern Quilt Guild. And so her post had a really thoughtful comment that really appropriately connected to the way that there was juxtaposition in her quilt that she made. So some things like that can be really interesting comments. Um, another example 
for recontextualization is Leslie Gold. And so I refer and have a hyperlink in there to her Instagram and some of the comments that people posted um, about a post that had recontextualize in it, recontextualization in it. And so it's a nice challenge to uh, include some savvy language. Then we get a little bit playful when it comes to layering. Layering is a postmodern principle about abundance, like the printing press, like the way that you can have so much stuff, <laughs> even from a garage sale is how I uh, incorporated that. I had lots and lots of blocks from a quilt that was never finished. So I think it will be fun to try to be super abundant in the way that we post. <laughs> uh, so the comments that I'm encouraging everyone to make are just an emoji for every single post that's in hashtag vignettes quilt. And it's fun and playful. It is a good way to amp up your vocabulary and your social skills. It also is something that will make your posts more popular, right? When people do a giveaway on their Instagram page, they ask people to comment. And when there are a lot of comments on a post that makes it trend and be more popular and then the Instagram algorithm shows it to more people. So it's a fun, playful way to get your work seen more, to highlight what you're doing. And I think especially like just lots and lots of comments of only Instagram emojis will be really entertaining to look at on day 14. The next day is the text prompt, another postmodern principle. And so here um, is the, the challenge to comment with just a word or an acronym. So um, like shut the F up or <laughs> to be honest, I love you. Uh, you can do all kinds of fun things or just a single word like yes or love. Um, hybridity. Uh, just normal comments for that, gazing, representation, obsessive. So again, a challenge to comment in an obsessive way <laughs> about how much the posts for that challenge delight you. Mine, of course, was about 10 strawberry fabrics that I own. So I'm hoping people will give me lots of strawberry comments on that day. <laughs> Uh, let's see, economy is the challenge to do a economical post about it. So I have a link to my friend Adriana and the way that sometimes she posts with just a little more space around her image than what I usually do. She has that little white border that makes things look small and special. And then of course, some economical comments as well, getting into the spirit of economy. So 1010 is the day that your fabric is due. Um, and we're getting into the principles of art and identifying them. This is a day where we're just taking stock and looking at what we've done. We don't need to start arranging or organizing our uh, vignettes too deeply. We're just like noticing. Oh, I used this principle of art here. I used that principle of art there, uh, especially when you see them all together. And then day 22 is composition. We're looking at actually arranging and moving things around and starting to play with different options. So I think it would be really fun if it was a video or multiple photos. You might have an option to, in the comments, vote on your favorite composition. Say you challenge yourself to post five different ways that you could arrange the vignettes in your quilt top. And then you could label it like A, B, C, D, E. And then people can comment and say like, I love composition A, but then say why. For example, it's beautiful because the gazing vignette creates a lot of visual movement within the piece. Um, day. 23, we want to choose some guiding principles for how we're doing our composition. And maybe that's something you did the day before. It's all kind of glommed together, but I just didn't want people to be feeling too rushed when they're transitioning from making vignettes all by themselves to 
starting to sew them to each other. So here you're going to articulate the principles that you used when you were doing your composition and laying things out. And again, we're going to meet on Zoom and discuss how the quilt along is going. And we're going to start to share some tips on vignette assembly, both composition and how do you, in a practical way, sew these things to each other? Because there are some things that you could do that will cause extra stress. And there are other things that you can do that will make it pretty easy and straightforward. Uh, day 24, we want to look and notice if we need more blocks or if we need to add something else to our quilt top. Uh, there aren't strict rules that you did these and then that's all that can be in the quilt. There's a really classic stance if you're painting or you're making art where you get up close and then you walk to the opposite side of the room and you stand with your arms crossed and you kind of look at it and you hem and you haw and you think a little bit and maybe you need to add something or subtract something and or maybe you need to take one of your blocks and cut it into four pieces and distribute it differently. There were a couple of my blocks that I cut in half at least three that I can think of off the top of my head, that I cut the blocks to be in two different locations in my quilt. And that helped with my goal of uh, rhythm. So one of the principles for my composition was rhythm. And I think I also chose unity. I think a lot of us will choose unity. We have so many disparate blocks and we want to unite them, make it look like one work of art that makes sense. So working towards that goal, I ended up cutting things apart. And I also added a couple extra bits of fabric that were not officially part of my vignettes for the earlier prompts. Oh, and this is a really fun one where we're, we're working on constructive criticism. So sometimes it's tempting to just say nice things, but nice things don't really push people forward or give them that creative edge that they need. Um, there's a lot of helpful stuff out there about the difference between being nice and being kind. And a kind person would alert someone to, hey, the way, the way that things are arranged is making my eye want to go off of the quilt rather than bouncing it back in. Or you know, have you noticed how asymmetrical your balance is or, uh, you know, something supportive? You're not going to say, oh, your quilt looks terrible. I don't like anything about it. That's not constructive criticism. You want to say, you know, like offer some insights, do something more than just being nice. That's pretty. Um, give them an insight, let them know what you're thinking or seeing. And so I have some examples um, of, of, of comments that could be helpful in that way. And then of course, when someone makes a comment like that, you don't have to listen to it. Someone can say, oh, add a floral print to your quilt. And you can say, that's a nice idea, but <laughs> I don't want to do it. One of the analogies that is always really helpful for me, is, and maybe I'm a pain in the butt when I go out to restaurants, I don't know, but sometimes I'll ask a waiter, if I'm trying to decide between the hamburger and the pasta, what would you do? Or I'll ask, you know, what's, what's the popular thing on the menu here? There are so many things, I can't decide what's popular. And they'll say, oh, the macaroni and cheese is the favorite thing. And just the mere mention of macaroni and cheese will make me think, no, I don't want pasta today at all. I want to order something different. And that is really helpful information too. So um, I always feel grateful for having had that conversation with a waiter. I don't feel obligated to order the macaroni and cheese because that's what they suggested, but it like hits something in my gut that lets me know, oh, especially since they suggested that, I can tell I don't want it. So you don't have to do what people suggest in the, in the constructive criticism, 
Um, it's meant to just kind of tug and push at you enough that you feel your own compass start to lock in or kick in. And then you're able to know, yeah, that floral doesn't sound good, but maybe I do like the idea of adding another fabric. Maybe I will find another fabric in my stash and add the stripe instead, because that calls to me. So um, be a really helpful day for some of that art language and navigating constructive criticism and critique. Then our vignette piecing strategy. We want to think about how are we piecing them together. You might piece them like a strip quilt. You might use some applique techniques. Um, it's a helpful day for understanding how do these come together. And then here, for example, in your comments, you're going to follow up on all of those nudges that you gave the day before on your constructive criticism. If someone followed your advice, notice and be delighted. If someone didn't follow your, your advice, um, you know, notice and say, wow, I'm proud of, like, I'm impressed that you followed your own compass. You really figured that out. Um, so things like follow up on that critique conversation. Now we're going to continue into um, piecing, how piecing's going, and then we're going to make a plan for quilting. This is going to be a really fun weekend. Hopefully you'll be able to do some quilting and then go down all the YouTube rabbit holes that are so fun when a person is making a quilt. But we're gonna kick things off at 10.30 in the morning with a soft bulk conversation with Maura Grace Ambrose. We're gonna talk about quilt business strategy and pricing. Like how do you put a price on a quilt? We're gonna discuss that. Um, and then the next day, I am going to be quilting live. That's something that I uh, like to do with my friend, Zach Foster. You've probably seen us do that before where our cameras are on our hands and we're just quilting away. And I'm encouraging everyone to try to go live at some point. Uh, Sam, Threads of My Life, and Gwen, they go live sometimes just like me and Zach do. And it's wonderful and entertaining and gives people a window into their studio. So maybe you and your accountability buddy can go live together um, on this Sunday. Maybe you can find someone spur of the moment. Maybe you can go live by yourself and then someone else in the quilt along will notice and they'll join you. And maybe you can even let them add their face. If you don't feel comfortable going live, it's a lot of technology. You certainly don't have to, <laughs> um, but it's a fun thing to consider and to have that bigger sense of permission to try it out, to express yourself, to connect both words and art together. I will be going live at noon. So I call that time slot and I'm gonna try to have a fun special guest to entertain everyone. And we'll be just working on quilting. Hopefully I'll be quilting my second vignettes quilt that I'll be making in the quilt along. And um, it should be a lovely time and a good opportunity if anyone in the quilt along wants to ask me a question as well, or you know, share any feedback. That'll be another fun opportunity that has a different feeling from being on Zoom. Uh, let's see. Day 29, we're going to talk about future variations. So if you liked piecing the quilt and you felt inspired to do it again, what would that be like? Uh, there are a lot of nice prompts that nudge you and say, hey, if you had a favorite block in this quilt, why not make a quilt just about that quilt block and revisit it? So this is hypothetical. You're just quilting your quilt right now. You don't have to commit all the way. But if you were to make a variation, what would that variation look like? It could be a fun opportunity to use a little like pick stitch layering app or something. Like maybe you could take a photo of your obsession block, for example, and make nine of them in a row. And you could even change the colors a little bit on the computer. Like you could play with what would happen if I revisited a prompt or two to make a follow-up quilt. Um, day 30, we're going to talk about quilt finishing. You probably are not ready to do this 
yet, but maybe you have a quilt finishing tip or tidbit that you would like to share. You can highlight a different quilt that you have finished in the past and show your favorite way to bind or add a sleeve or sign your name. So hopefully we'll all be signing our names to our quilts. And then our very, very last day will be the hunter's moon. Today is the harvest moon. So for the hunter's moon, um, share the best, most beautiful photo of your quilt that you can. Really celebrate it. And we're going to be talking about quilt support. There are so many things that can happen to a quilt after you finish binding it and signing your name. I love encouraging people to do that kind of thing. I feel so proud that I've had students of mine be in magazines and quilt exhibitions and really getting their quilts out there in the world. And um, this will be a really fun special day to talk about what's at least one thing that you'll commit to doing for your quilt. Will you have someone with some real, like have a straight, instead of just you, will you have a stranger take a pic or a friend or someone, will you have someone take a nice photograph of your quilt or maybe a nice photo of you with your quilt? Or will you apply to an exhibit or will you give it to someone as a gift who you know is a quilt worthy person? So, um, and then if you're doing that, how do you know someone's quilt worthy? It's a very important question to consider. So um, that will be our last day and we'll have our last Zoom at that time. Uh, and I see we've got quite a few comments in the chat. Let me just catch up there if anyone wants to. Uh, okay, good, 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 good. Okay. So this is our five minute video about the video workshop. It's just um, footage from the video workshop and there are some good tips just in this part. So see if, if this little taste is inspiring or helpful all on its own. Oh, you know what? I don't think I optimized for sound. Hang on, we can make this better. <laughs> Okay. Hello and welcome to making a quilt about some art concepts. I have found these appropriated fabrics and some of them might help me fill in one of the later prompts so that I don't have to piece my block at all. I can just say, boom, here's a block. It's done, moving on to the next step. So here, the task is to make a vignette inspired by each of these seven elements of art. It is up to you how you do those vignettes. Lines. Lines probably are what you think they are. There's not a secret special definition. I have previously cut some batting and that is on my floor and that's helping to contain the space of the quilt so that I can work with this as a picture plane that I'm adding to rather than a limitless expanse on the floor. This is me initially laying out my fabrics for the very first time, splitting some of them open. I didn't know what they would be like. We're getting a sense of the expansiveness of that skirt, how much space is taken up by the feed sacks and how those other vignettes are interacting with each other. I began in the top corner of the quilt and I was thinking about those sections that I described previously. So even though it was tempting to sew this strip of patchwork together, I didn't do it that way because it didn't make sense for how I would be able to ultimately sew things together. All of this more. is folded and safety pinned. Here, this is also a folded edge because I had this beautiful raw edge right here with this lace that was on this found block. I did sew the block to these additional pinwheels though. When I got to my 
embroidery of my face. I also used this um, you know, beautiful vintage lace edge. So that's a raw edge, but it's finished edge. Whip stitch is something that I like to do all over, as you can see here. But I also like to do the whip stitch when I reach a corner. So especially by this orange peel fabric, there are a lot of corners for those pinwheels. I'm going to do a running stitch for most of it to be fast, but at the corner I did three little whip stitches, both the inny corner and the outy corner. Here we are ready for the very last step. We're looking at quilting and also at variations. If you're quilting over an embroidery, each quilting stitch has an over and an under. And you might try to be strategic about doing an under stitch so that you don't break some of those lines. So here, one more time, let's look at how I pieced this. I've ironed under the edge of the yellow and then slid the orange peel underneath it, just like if it was applique, but it's not applique. Let's do my favorite binding technique where I wrap the back around to the front to bind. And I think that that yellow and white color and having the same binding fabric across the whole quilt, again, helped to create some unity. Close, I think that there are a lot of moments to discover something, to be surprised that it actually works together as one whole, and then to get up close and notice some of the detail and the nuance that makes each block unique and special. We have this one life to live. Our time is so precious, and I am really grateful that you decided to share some of that time with me. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. I appreciate your support and I appreciate your trust in me. Uh, look forward to seeing you guys on Instagram. Bye-bye. Okay, so that was the trailer. Um, I think definitely some really good tips in there just to get to see that part. So um, do we have anyone who wants to maybe use the raise hand function who has either completed the quilt already or has watched all or part of the workshop video who would just like to share a little bit about some of the insights that you got or what your experience was like working with it? Jillian, you're trying to raise your hand, right? Just unmute. Yeah, we would love to. Yeah, I'm on my, hi, I'm on my iPad, so a little bit different. <laughs> um, yeah, let me see. Can you see? So I'm sorry yeah. for the background. So there's my, my completed uh, vignettes. This was such a lovely experience. Um, I had a bit of experience with, with the elements of art from having taught elementary school art and had always been curious to how they would be used. So there was a lot of thought had to go into this. And I was thinking about, okay, if I was telling somebody that who was gonna start this, a tip that would be uh, really useful. Two things that I did at the beginning that kind of took off a pre the pressure of being a traditional, traditional modern quilter in that you make blocks. One, you had you said about putting um, a piece of batting on the floor and using that as as your canvas so i had just gotten a design wall and i thought okay i'm not putting this on the floor this is going on the wall and what i did was i used a piece a piece of wool and i just made myself um, a square i think i made a 36 inch square and i said okay that's it it can't be any bigger than that and that took off that pressure of how big is this going to be um, the other thing that i did was because we were making blocks and you know, you traditionally, all your blocks are the same size, or how do you decide what size it's going to be? And it happened, it was a Sunday morning that I was starting this. 
So what I did was I sent a message to a whole bunch of friends on Instagram and said, just tell me a number between one and I think I said 15. Just tell me, I'll tell you what I wanted for later on. And they just all came back with a number and then I wrote them down and those became the sizes for my blocks. So I the first person love said that. two. And the second person said seven, the block was a two by seven. And I just jotted that down next to each one. So that was like that pressure was also gone. So now I was like, okay, this only has to be this big or this is going to be this big. So it, it kind of removed that and it gave me an element of randomness, which is a hard thing to do. So if you can come up with a way of getting out of that, I think it makes it, you, you tend to focus more on the actual elements. You know, that you know is, what I mean? Yeah, that is a brilliant suggestion <laughs> with the size. I love that. I think and I do. I agree. I think the biggest challenge with the pattern is how open-ended it is. Once you realize how expansive line is that you could do almost anything for the line block. Yeah, you can, you can do anything. Well, it could be anything at all. So if there were too, if there were too many open-ended pieces of it, it, it was, it could be really intimidating. Mm -hmm. So I found, and I had, that was a similar to a technique that I had done with with kids teach learn teaching them how to do watercolor painting I would never give a kid like a, a 10 by 10 piece of watercolor paper I would always give them like a piece of it that big paint me a picture on that so it was a much smaller piece and you could fill it quickly and you had a result so yeah. I found I thought okay if I can incorporate this and then of course the other advantage to doing that with my friends they all had a vested interest from the beginning <laughs> they wanted to know so what are you doing with this number? Which one? And then when I told them, they were, okay, which one is mine? Like, which one did I have? And they, they all took an element in it. That was, that was really important in, in the creation of that, of this. The other thing, I didn't realize the importance of the palette. Mm. You had made a comment early on about um, that the palette could be a minimal palette. And I thought, I'm going to make a white quilt. I've always wanted to make a white quilt. And I made a white quilt and because of, and it has some color in it, but because you said that, I just took that and went with that. And then that eliminated, oh, well, it could be, you know, red or blue or yellow or green. And I'm, I plan to make a second one because I want to make a colored version of this. Yeah. So it's really interesting how the, how the, the, the pieces play off. Cause as I was, you were going through it, I was looking and thinking about some of them and thinking, did I put that in? And I, I made myself a little book at the beginning too. That was another thing. So that I kept notes mm -hmm. uh, about my reactions, what I thought you meant by the prompt and then what you said you meant by the prompt and, I, and what I did or what I might have done. So I have a little book of ideas that was really helpful. And, and I've discovered today that there are a few things I just forgot or I just yeah. decided I'm not here. I don't, that'll, I'll put that in the next one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love that suggestion as well about how sometimes you just need a few more rules to contain things. I think part of working in a quilt along is helpful as well. Like you don't really have time to go out to the store to make the quilt block for the next day. And there really is a pretty strict, like if you the want to follow right. the time limit, and the timetable, then you have to think, well, what can I make with the 15 minutes that I have today? And then you can yeah. say, oh, but Wednesday I'll have time. On Wednesday, I can spend three hours on my block and make it really fancy. And then, uh, you know, maybe <laughs> Thursday you have no time at all. So you just appropriate something, you find a block that you already have. Yes, yes, yeah. I agree. I, I did it within the confines of Pokemon. Yeah, so I had the yeah, I had it. I kept I had all the pieces, yeah, I had all the pieces made by the end of QuiltCon, but I didn't have it together. But but you you inadvertently gave me permission to do things that I had found really hard. So one of the there were these little elements in this. So these uh -huh. are my appropriated blocks. I had actually just before this, before QuiltCon, had bought a, a vintage tablecloth that I bought simply for the material because it would be beautiful to uh -huh. embroider on. I chopped it up. That's the first yeah. time I've ever given myself permission to cut it up. And I think it was partly because it didn't belong to me or to mm -hmm. somebody who belonged to me. 
so thank you. You, you oh, you've cha you've changed a whole lot of things in the way I I quilt and what I do. It's it was it's it's been a fabulous experience. That's why I'm back. <laughs> thank you. That's so wonderful to hear. Um, okay, let's go over now to Sam. Hello. <laughs> Can you hear me? Hi. Hi. I am going to lower my hand now. Right. Okay. Um, so I got your pattern when you first released it um, and have been ruminating it. And then when you said that there was going to be the quilt along and I was like, oh, I've got to wait. Um, but I did start looking at it properly over the summer holidays and have started to dive into the blocks and have mostly worked my way through. Um, mm -hmm. But the video, there are a few that I was really stuck on and the video workshop, which I have watched quite a lot of times now. <laughs> <laughs> um, so thank you. Um, has been brilliant for just getting me over those little niggly ones. I think the one that I um, struggled with most was the representation one because I knew I didn't want to do my portrait, mm -hmm. but I didn't know where I was going with it. So you'll have to wait and see what I have chosen to do for that one. But um, I'm really happy with it now. It's one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. so. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, my, I think maybe I caused some of that because I struggled most with my representation block as well. I think it can be hard to condense mm. the block that represents one's identity all the way down to just something little. Um, yeah. But I and I, I, played, I played with lots of ideas and trying to mix up things. So I know um, when Zach did the makery, the playful pause with the stitching without looking. So I did, I have got a, now got a block with loads of words that people have said about yeah. me um, and done that. But then it was a bit too abstract. And I thought, is it too fixed pointed? And I wanted something more like, when you did um, the scavenger hunt and putting those intentions into the quilt, I wanted something like that. So ah. the one I've chosen allows for more mm -hmm. <laughs> Oh, I love that. <laughs> yeah, um, but it's really good. And it was really interesting having read the pattern, ruminated on things and then watched the video and how my interpretations of things have changed so I've I made the blocks before I saw the blocks before I'd looked at the video and it's quite interesting how maybe I would have done them differently mm -hmm. but at the same time they're they are of this summer so yeah oh that's wonderful I um taught this quilt pattern at an in-person workshop in Wisconsin earlier this summer. And I'm teaching and busy, but I was like, well, let me just show what it's like to come up with a lot of the blocks real fast. So I made at least two thirds of the blocks just within this two day workshop while I was also busy teaching and demoing and stuff. And uh, they went with my neutral colors, color palette. I'm doing mostly black and white, but there are a few other things that can be added as well. And I think I want to keep most of those blocks, but some of them, I think I'm gonna give myself permission to swap out as well. And so I need to dig through there and see, is there a block that for sure I'm not gonna use because then maybe that will be the block that I put in the fabric swap, uh, which I think will be more special because it'd be something that I sewed together, but it's one that yeah. I don't, uh, you know, the now I have a better, bigger vision because I am at home and I'm not teaching at the same time. Mm -hmm. So um, maybe if there's one that you really feel excited about your new idea for it, that could help you figure out your block for the fabric yeah. swap. <laughs> yeah. Um, the other point I wanted to make is um, I think that um, Gillian touched on it as well with, with the color palette that for me has given that foundation so I posted my color palette at the weekend which mm -hmm. is indigos and ochres and yes. whites and I'm that has given me such a great foundation I love that color palette anyway you've got your primary colors and I've noticed that it might need a little touch of red mm. so um hmm. so yeah we'll go with that and we'll see where it goes but yeah the color palette thing getting that sorted to start with has been, been really useful 
Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you very mm -hmm. much. I think that that's a great tip to highlight, um, you know, how important and special the prompt for today is. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to shift my way back to the gallery view. Um, I loved the conversation in the chat about using a dice to figure out what size your fabric would be. And now it looks like there are a couple other thoughtful questions. Um, oh, so some nice conversation. Is it, does anyone have a, you can just raise your hand. Anyone have a question for me that you maybe put in the chat already, but we can talk about now. Okay, and someone answered better than I did that there are 17 prompts. Okay, Angie, I see you. Yeah, I actually have a question about the PowerPoint. Um, mm -hmm. Are we gonna get everything like in a list, like how you had it, day one, day two, day three, because this is my first quilt along. Mm -hmm. Clearly I had no understanding how it worked. <laughs> Otherwise I would not have started and saved myself. Uh -huh. um, so, because <laughs> I, I mean, I have lost so much sleep. I'd be up in the middle of the night trying to figure out what is she talking about? What's that mean? And so <laughs> I would save myself. You but, tried to um, do the whole quilt in advance. Well, I've got, I've got, it's all ready to sew together. I mean, oh, I've got wow. everything. That, yeah. Um, so anyway, <laughs> so I think, so, but now as far as like the, the daily prompts and what we're supposed to do on Instagram and all that stuff. Is that going to be sent to us every day? Is that coming in a list? Like, what is that? <laughs> that is a great question. I am going to screen share and show you. Um, also, every quilt along is a little bit different. Certainly this one. Okay, there we go. I'm just setting setting up to share my screen with you guys. Okay, so every quilt along is different. Certainly all three quilt alongs that I have led are really different from each other. The first one was over two months and I just posted a new video, a new prompt every Friday and we went through. And then the second quilt along that I did had a prompt every day for a month. And that was it. It was just a very brief little prompt. And so this one is a lot more wordy, but I think the benefit is going to be a deeper sense of community that we'll have together. So uh, they're not all the same, but I think one thing that is usually pretty consistent is the along part that everyone's sewing together at the same time. So I'm sorry that that <laughs> caused you to lose so much sleep trying to get it done in advance, but there will be opportunities to still be playful as you move through things or, uh, you know, take your photos, get ready to post them, but you can start piecing and start quilting if that feels good. So we're on HeidiParks.com. This is my website and this is the home page. And then over here is the purchase tab where most of you have probably been before because that's where you got the vignettes quilt pattern. And then the video workshop is there as well. And then here on the blog tab has everything for the quilt along. So I could, I could update this. This is just from my, from September 2nd, when my email newsletter went out, but the important things are the same. So this is the Google slideshow. And if you click that, it will open in a new tab and you'll be able to see the whole slideshow. So on Instagram, I posted the first three slides just to kind of get people going, but I might not always post the slide because you guys will have access to that here. So uh, for example, for tomorrow, you wanna make your block 
or sorry, we're just discussing the elements. So you don't have to sew anything at all, but you can share something thoughtful about the elements and principles handout, post about an aspect that was interesting or new to you. So were the elements of art new to you? Were the post, we're not really getting into the postmodern principles. Those are probably new to everybody. It's a unique list, um, but you'll share something about either an element or a principle tomorrow. So that's the PowerPoint and that's accessed on my blog, which is just HeidiParks.com backslash blog. And then there's the video workshop, which is on the purchase tab, which you guys already saw. There's the quilt of, oh, I, that has already happened. Don't say I could like delete that now. So it's easier. There's no official registration. I won't be sending out any mass emails to people who are in the quilt along. Like you get to just participate with the hashtag. Um, using the hashtag in your posts and tagging me is what keeps us all you know, united and able to find things together. These are the free live Zooms. And so you already found the sign up for that. And I'm also going to be posting them all on my YouTube channel. So you don't, if you can't attend live, you can still benefit from seeing the Zoom. They will be over here on YouTube. So uh, here it just shows my most recent things. Today I posted that preview of the, the trailer for the vignettes workshop. So that is on there and things are always, the recent things are always right there. Um, and then these are all of the links just to make sure that you can find them. And that's, that's it. So it's not a ton of things. It's mainly the slideshow is really the only thing that you want to toggle over to so that you can see what the prompt is for the day. Is that helpful to see it that way, Angie? Yes. Okay, yes. wonderful. Um, okay, and I realize we are at one. It's a busy day. I don't, I, it's so fun to get to see everyone though. So I understand if you had to head out at one, that's totally okay. If you would like to stay on and talk a little bit more and especially, um, you know, I see some wonderful stuff happening in the chat. Maybe some people have already found their accountability buddies. Um, so that can be happening in there. But are there other, oh, perfect. I see a question for me. Um, help me make sure I'm pronouncing your name right. Is it Chandra? Chandra. Chandra. It's Chandra. Chandra. Thank you. Yeah. I always, um, I just wanted, yeah, no, I understand. I do it all the time too. I'm a teacher brain, right? Um, I know, I and I like recognize you. your name too. And so I, recognizing it isn't necessarily the same as yeah. pronouncing it and I am not I, I'm not picky about my pronunciation but it is a soft she's Chandra um whoever was asking about what to do on what days you also have a google sheets that has a daily um grid of prompts and I just wanted to mention that that's it wasn't a question it was just if it's easier oh, for people you. to look at it in a list I did at the very end I changed a couple things. I put a little bit more time for quilting and a little less. Like I was up way late last night finishing the Google <laughs> slideshow. Uh, and so in that moment, I thought, you know, people could have a little more time to quilt and they don't need maybe quite so much time to piece their vignettes to each other. So um, the very end, there's a slight shift on that Google spreadsheet, but certainly, um, up till day 20 is accurate, <laughs> but thank you for that. Okay, uh, Karen, I'm gonna spotlight you. Hi. Hello. <laughs> I wasn't expected to be called upon. <laughs> oh, okay, you have your hand raised. So that's why I was thinking. Oh. Sorry, sorry. No, I'm, I'm just looking at the chat. So, um, yeah. Oh, okay, so, lovely. No, I, I, Excellent. I didn't have my hand raised, but um, I, I just say I was one of the um, the lucky winners, and the the video workshop is fantastic. It, it's just so helpful. So I would really recommend it. 
Oh, thank you. That's wonderful to hear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm so excited to get started too. Beautiful. All right. Thank you. I'm going to Thanks. spotlight Thanks, Heidi. Erica. You've got your hand raised also. If it's accident, that's fine. <laughs> oh, yeah. And you're just looking to unmute. Sorry. I was trying to figure out how to unmute. Um, so I had a question about symbolism. Mm. I'm going through here and I'm thinking about blocks. Recently in my life, something changed. Yeah. And I feel like in some ways I'm striving too hard. Like every block I'm like overthinking the symbolism mm. because I want to, but I'm wondering how to navigate. If you have any yeah. advice. On that's symbolism. wonderful. Mm -hmm. When I have the same idea going through my head the entire time, but I don't want it shouting. I don't mm. want the symbolism so apparent. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love that idea. So um, let me think for a second. I did put you on the spot. Sorry. No, I, I love it. That's wonderful. Let me actually co-spotlight myself so we can see both of us. Uh, I like that idea a lot of incorporating symbolism. I think to, um, is it Jillian? Our point or from Jilly, Jilly's point earlier in like, how can you make it a little bit smaller, a little bit more defined? And so she had the, you know, we, we had the idea from her about using some dice to make the size smaller or, uh, you know, what Sam was saying about choosing a specific color palette and that that's really helpful to narrow things down. I think that an interest in symbolism and investigating a specific subject is another really wonderful way to be able to wrap your brain around the prompts a little more. I know that my good friend and neighbor, Sarah Eichhorn, is making a version of this quilt, the vignettes quilt. And it's also about her experience as a mother. So she's using clothes that her babies have grown out of. And also I think, or maybe just connecting to the other family members. Cause I think there's also some blocks that connect to her husband and that connect to her husband's father, who is the caretaker for their kids. So um, having that emphasis on family has been really helpful. And like, there was one where she seam ripped the PPTPs and laid them flat on the block and like that was shape right because that makes a funny little shape when you see merged that and it's not a full circle anymore so if you have something that you're interested in investigating or certainly even similar to what sam was talking about where she wanted to revisit the manifestation block from the scavenger hunt and she was thinking about what, what do I want to create and invite into this quilt? Uh, that that would be a lovely thing. I think, for example, if you're working with that shape block, is there a really minimal, simple way that you can show the thing that you are looking to create symbolism for? Um, line has the possibility to be much more expressive. Like, this is a, a embroidery that I did years ago, took you know, probably 10 hours, maybe more. So very time consuming, thoughtful, easy to understand about love and romance and food. Uh, so like for the line prompt, you could do something perhaps very in depth if you wanted but then shape, maybe you could do it like a silhouette or an even more minimal shape, like where you are a circle and then all the other half circles represent something else or some of that kind of lovely symbolism. As we get into the postmodern principles, I think you can also think about, you know, what are you appropriating from? Like, for example, if you're doing symbolism about something in your romantic life, for example. There are so many fairy tales that we've been kind of fed to think that life should be one way when it's actually another way, but you heard all these stories that are the first way. So 
uh, one of the artists that I have linked for that prompt is Ai Kejima, and she uses a lot of found fabrics like kids' bed sheets that have Snow White on them, for example, and using some kind of found image that's really obvious about that type of a story could be interesting where it's not you, but it's you grappling with symbolism and also with like with archetypes would be interesting to have something that's found like that for appropriation. If it's, um, I'm trying to think of a different kind of block, like economy, maybe what you're doing in your life right now is simplifying. You've cut something out because you don't want to deal with it anymore. And so how could the economy block mirror that kind of simplification that's happening right now in life? And um, maybe there would even be a space where you show all the stuff that you, maybe that would be an obsession block, right? Show all the things you used to be obsessed with that now, like no more, um, like a little exorcism block of things that you want want to say no to or let go of. Um, I don't know, is that, is that helpful? with symbolism. And I guess in some ways I, what, like I'm having no trouble tying it all in, but then I'm feeling like I'm bound to it in a way if I start down that path and then other blocks I'm like, well, how can this tie into it? And do yeah. I just yeah. give myself that block and figure it just assembles itself into it? Or mm -hmm. do I go overboard and worry about every block? Okay, I have a really good thing to share to help with that. So here, I've recently updated my gallery page on my website, thanks to Kat, who's here in the Zoom as well. So this quilt is one that I made for my current artist residency. And some of the things have a lot of symbolism. I was tracking things as of last October. And so um, if have someone who maybe would be ideal to Sorry, sorry. Someone, someone has a lot of noise in the background and maybe they could uh, uh, mute. Uh, I think mute I found them and muted them. Uh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> Luckily I have that power. <laughs> so um, here in this quilt, for example, some of the symbolism that I did use was that I was leading the moon improv quilt at the time and it was the um, a new, a blue moon on Halloween. So these moons map out that time of when my artist residency started and the quilt along that we were doing. And then this courthouse steps block at the time, Ruth Bader Ginsburg had just passed away and they were working on the Supreme Court. And I wanted to document that that was in the current events. And then I was also teaching a fair amount on Zoom and I had to demo like large and small scale applique. And it was just a practical thing from my life that I was doing. But that's why this shape is here is it was a scrap that was from sewing some clothing for myself and it showed a curve and an innie corner and an Audi corner, corner and a convex, you know, a concave, cur like both kinds of curves. And it was just very convenient for me to put it on the quilt top that I was working on instead of doing it somewhere separate. And then, so for me, I think a lot of the things that make the quilt interesting and add some extra like poetry to it actually are the moments where I was doing something because it was convenient or the shape I felt like doing that day. I think that adds a nice diary kind of a quality to it, as well as rounds thing out, things out. Like if everything had been so obvious, like the courthouse steps and the moon, and uh, I think there would have been a heaviness to it that I was able to avoid by thinking like, today I like the color peach or Re revisiting the LA, I revisited these leaves one, two, three, four, five different times. And two of the times I accurately traced a leaf from that I had pressed from being at the park. And the other times I was just like, well, 
I'm at my aunt's house and we're having pizza and watching a movie and I want to sew while we're doing this. So I'll just start sewing a leaf. I'm sure that's how I made this one. And then later I wanted to do some applique, um, but like these aren't as real. And it was really interesting for me to understand the accurate, thoughtful leaf, the way the leaf really is in nature compared to the way that my brain apparently thinks the leaf is. Like, I really think these stem parts are super long compared to reality. And that's part of why in the title, I used this word reconstructed. So reconstructed was about reconstructing memories. Like, I think I remember this leaf, but it's actually a different way. So that could be a fun way in as well as like, if you're revisiting or ruminating about something, maybe try to depict it multiple times with different tools. Like this is a great example of line versus shape to, to depict something. And then also just kind of like all these shapes that are in here are just scraps that I had, or I was working on something. And these little bits are like little doodle, I was just trying to use up all of my little bits and bobs of thread. Like they were there and they needed using up and I thought I'll put them on this quilt. So that, that kind of work can actually be really helpful. So I would encourage you very much to deviate sometimes or let yourself believe that something's not on topic. Sometimes those are the ones that are the most poignant later on. Um, just, you know, fair warning, like when you think you're doing something that's not about uh, the subject or the symbolism, that's sometimes when it is the most about it. Thank you. That second part really focused on that. So yeah. Thank okay. You. Wonderful. Thank you for asking that question that really brought out some good tips that I don't normally think of including. All right, um, do we have anyone else who would like to raise their hand or ask or share something? Okay, um, I like this comment from Caroline that says overthinking can stand for the principal economy. Beck, it's the opposite. Oh, okay, that you guys are definitely having a good conversation in here. Um, yep. and. Kat says she struggles with the same thing that you just articulated, Erica. So thank you. Thank you for that as well. Um, let's, I'm going to move back to, oh, wonderful. I see Sandra. Make sure you unmute yourself. Am I unmuted? Yes. Um, I'm just wondering, um, as I go through the the pattern and the video, I'm just wondering if it's a good idea because I keep seeing um, prompts that are to me overlap and re and are related. So would mm -hmm. it be okay to intentionally make a block that is both, let's say, um, texture and value, like to to include both prompts in one? Um, that's because I, I just keep on, like when I picture stuff, I've got my notes that I've made on my pattern. And after watching your video, like I've, you know, I watched it once and then I, um, more intentionally, I watched it and, and have made notes and I keep on wanting to overlap. So yeah. is that, that's, I think that's going to happen, I guess. Just for yeah. Those, you know, are, I did that, especially you know, I, in I the, um, my texture block was also a juxtaposition block because I, I wanted to highlight two different kinds of texture. So especially kind of combining between the elements and the postmodern principles is fun. Um, I do think like, for example, texture and value, uh, you can make a grayscale with texture, right? Like you could have a few yeah. stitches and, it, and or it could build slowly, but you could also use something like color to, to show uh, yeah, just that grayscale. I just value. said it was do whatever, but yeah, yeah. just to relate to. Um, but yeah, like to broadly answer, you do not have to have all 17 blocks. And if you want to combine some of them, 
you definitely can. There are also certain prompts that will lead to lots of blocks, like the layering prompt. You, you're going to have a bunch of them from there. And I think my appropriation as well was like four different blocks that I had that I got at the rummage that were clearly made by someone, by the same person. And I ended up cutting one of those in half. Uh, so yeah, it can be a bit nebulous. At the end, you don't have to be able to say, these are the 17 yeah. and they don't overlap. But um, yeah, it, it can definitely be fun to try to focus on noticing the difference between each one though, or making them, but making them similar. You could make like a little family of blocks for yourself, um, like noticing some of the similarities. One of the uh, variations prompts that I think I gave was, what if you make a courthouse steps quilt, but each courthouse steps block is inspired by a different element or postmodern principle. Element. So um, if some of them feel really similar, maybe it doesn't have to be courthouse steps block, but it could be that you could purposefully make them similar in size and the way that you piece or embroider the block could be similar to kind of highlight the sameness. Okay, you're not muted but I couldn't hear you just then. I think that's good though. Um, okay. Anybody else with a question or comment or? Yeah, Melanie, I see, Un unmute yourself. I'm gonna spotlight you. Okay, so this is not a question. I mm -hmm. just went into my little scrap drawer of reds found my like one strawberry fabric and I wanted to show you. Oh, I so, love it. That's I think so, it was just so like from Joanne Fabrics or something, but it was, it's all strawberries in these blue bowls and it's just kind of cool. And I used it for a main fabric for my nephew's daughter a number oh. of years ago, but I have a little um, back there card catalog that I have, um, you know, a drawer for my red scraps and a drawer for my green scraps. And so I just pulled that out to show oh, you. Oh, I love that. That card mm -hmm. catalog could be a perfect window into your obsession block as well. <laughs> my, I love my card catalog. That's fantastic for my, yeah. it's just holding the little teeny scraps. Oh, that's so beautiful. That reminds me Thanks. also of the chronological block in the scavenger hunt quilt. Yeah, I haven't looked at the scavenger hunt quilt yet. That's okay. neat. Yeah, that's something that's for me to, to check out later. Yeah, I think you'll be into that prompt for sure. Yeah. Thank you very much. It's lovely to see that. Okay, and I'm going back to gallery view and I see Caroline, I'm gonna spotlight you. I don't know how to raise my hand here. In, in you did it effectively. <laughs> and I, can I just share something I'm really uh -huh. proud of because um, this is this would be recontextualization or what uh -huh. um, you used feed sex and I made the block pecking order. Uh -huh. I'm so proud of this idea, you know, because uh, it's, it's like the chicken. chicken. Yeah. So, oh, I love that. I just thought I'd share this because I, I saw it in my picture. And that's a traditional, like the, the way those triangles are, that's the pecking order block. Yeah. Brilliant. That is, oh yeah. That and prompt, I'm, I'm I think. going to write about it then on day, whatever on Instagram. Yeah. Then. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. That is so fun to see. Okay. And looking for anybody else waving their hand officially raising. Okay, wonderful. Well, we this was a beautiful amount of time and so nice to get started and excited on the quilt together. Uh, please don't be shy about sending me a DM or asking me something on Instagram. And also, you know, remember we have a lot of talented people in the quilt along. So anybody else who's using the hashtag, you could ask them as well and probably get a really good answer. Uh, do we, 
need any extra assistance for either accountability buddies or the fabric swap? Um, Lulu says, thank you for having this as a quilt along and incorporating the art concepts. I love your open-ended quilt alongs. Thank you. Um, I'm not sure how we're picking um, accountability buddies. Ah, so you can look through the hashtag and find someone. Otherwise, you could find someone in the chat right now. Do we maybe want to just have people raise hands if you're currently on the lookout for an accountability buddy, if that's something that appeals to you? You could raise your hand and then you guys could just pick. Um, oh, so then I would really need to describe how to do the raise hand function. That is on the bottom. On the very bottom right, you see the word end. And then if you go over to the left, you might see apps. And then a little more left, you see reactions with a smiley face and a plus sign. If you click that, then you can choose either to put a heart or raise your hand or clap or do a check mark. So if you are looking for an accountability buddy, you can raise your hand. And then later you can also un lower your hand. Okay. So Kat and Ruth and oh my poor memory. Who was it that just asked about accountability buddies? I see Karen also is looking for an accountability buddy. Ah, can you explain accountability buddies? That is a great question. So an accountability, let's have, is Sam still on? Sam, can you explain what an accountability buddy is? I can. Um, so I met up on one of Heidi's classes with Gwen, who was on here earlier. I don't know if she's still here, but she might be. But oh, she's she is. Accountability yeah, buddy. Gwen, you can help explain too. <laughs> <laughs> When you say you're going to do something, Gwen will pop on and say, Sam, have you done that yet? In a nice way. <laughs> and, <laughs> and we just sort of cheer each other on and help each other out if we're stuck. And it's, it's been invaluable. Yeah. Gwen, can you add a little? little? <laughs> yeah, I don't know which mic's working, so I hope you can hear me. Um, yep. It's just been a lot of fun. And as, as um, Sam says, just supportive and encouraging. and you know, sometimes when you're just a bit stuck, just to throw new ideas in. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's just been, I find really, really helpful. And also for me, because I'm quite a new quilter, Sam's been really great at just signposting other resources that she's found. So, you know, video links to stuff and just, yeah, really encouraging, very supportive. Yeah, yeah, it's been amazing to see. So two heads are better than one a lot of the time. So it's, it, that's really useful as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So I think what I'll do right now is I'm going to either pause or stop the recording. We probably don't need finding accountability buddies on YouTube. Okay. So especially if you're watching on YouTube now and you're still on the prowl for an accountability buddy, it's not too late. You can find one in the hashtag and um, you can even send me uh you can do a story and tag me, like do an Instagram story, say I'm looking for a vignettes accountability buddy, and then I can reshare your story. And that will definitely get you um, can hopefully connected to somebody. All right, any, any last comments or things going on? This was so wonderful. All right, thank you everyone. Uh, I'm really, really excited for this month. Happy harvest full moon and um, have fun collecting your pad your your colors and your fabrics. And thank you again um, to everybody who shared about how important that step is to get you grounded and started on the right foot. Bye, thank you.